Three fair coins are tossed. What is the probability that two heads and one tail appear? On the first toss, you can either get heads or tails. If you got heads on the first toss, you could still get heads or tails on the second toss. If you had gotten tails on the first toss, you could still get heads or tails for the second toss. If you had gotten heads on the first toss, tails on the second toss, you could still have gotten heads or tails for the third toss. If you had gotten heads on the first toss, tails on the second toss, you still have gotten heads or tails. Yeah, it keeps going on and on. I've listed all the different possibilities. Heads, 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 and it's in this order. So we want to say that it has to be in this order. We'll put parentheses around it. We don't care about the order, by the way. We'll put curly brackets around it. It's the set brackets. And they want to know what's the probability that two heads and one tail will appear. But it doesn't say it has to be in that order. So you look for anything here that has two heads and one tail. Well, that's that one right there, that one right there, and that one right there. And that's three out of the eight. Now, how could you have done this quicker without a tree diagram? When you're only trying to get one tail to appear, it can be in the last slot, it can be in the middle slot, or it can be in the first slot. So there's three possibilities for where you can put only one tail in this ordered list. But you'd have to know that there's eight different possibilities. How could you know that there's eight different possibilities? Use the counting principle to say that there's two possibilities for each of your two branches there, and then there's two possibilities for each of those two branches. So two times two times two leads eight different possibilities. And we figured out that there were three possibilities out of the eight, three out of eight.